Hello everyone, my name is Vasily and it's a lecture of Navaging Company dedicated to estimation of orientation and complementary filter used for this purpose. In previous lecture, we discussed the pedometer algorithm used to estimate moments of person's steps and their length based on readings from accelerometer. And in this lecture, we will discuss how we can determine the orientation heading of a person using microsensors found in most of modern gadgets. Our lecture is structured as follows. First, we will start with basic discussions on the heading estimation. Then we will give an explanation of how one can use gyroscope or magnetometer to determine user's heading and discuss pros and cons of using each of these sensors. Later, we will demonstrate performance of both these approaches on real data track. After that, we will switch to explanation of more advanced technique called complementary filter, where data from both magnetometer and gyroscope are fused to obtain more precise heading estimate. After that, we will give a brief comment on why accelerometer sensor is also necessary in heading estimation. And finally, we will conclude with demonstration of how pedometer and complementary filter can be combined in a so-called pedestrian debt reckoning positioning approach. The most well-known and established approach for heading estimation in modern gadgets is based on readings from micromagnetometer. The idea of this approach is pretty straightforward. Readings from magnetometer can be interpreted as a simple compass pointing towards magnetic north. Then magnetic north direction is compared with the orientation of the device itself, top screen direction to provide real-time heading in most of positioning applications. At the same time, in general, there is a list of available microsensors, including also gyroscope and accelerometer, that can be combined with magnetometer to provide more precise heading estimation. And now we will discuss the specifics of using each of these sensors. Unlike magnetometer, gyroscope measures angular velocity of an object that can be further integrated over time to provide the change of orientation during a specific time period. Thus, unlike magnetometer, gyroscope can only provide relative orientation. The benefit of using gyroscope is that it gives quite precise estimated heading compared to magnetometer on small time intervals. However, the readings from gyroscope are subject to constant bias which leads to unlimited accumulation of error over time. This makes gyroscope unacceptable for long-term positioning purposes. Video on the left demonstrates both these features on the example of experiment where device is rotated around one of its axes, blue line. As one can see, this rotation is estimated quite precise. But at the same time, one can see that there is a growing error in estimation of angles of rotation around other two axes, which should be zero in practice. Such behavior results exactly from bias in gyroscope readings. Magnetometer, as discussed before, can provide absolute heading even without using additional sensors. However, for indoor navigation applications, this approach has some significant drawbacks since magnetometer readings are subject to disturbances introduced by metal objects. For instance, bottom figure represents magnetic field distribution in a typical office environment. One can see that magnitude of a magnetic field can significantly vary even on a relatively small scale. The influence of magnetic errors is also visualized on the left video. Here, we start the test by rotating the device on the table which results in the change of magnetometer readings and non-zero readings from gyroscope. Then, device is returned to initial state and is kept motionless, which is indicated by zero readings from gyroscope. But at the same time, we bring a metal object close to the device, which, as one can see, leads to a significant change in magnetometer readings, despite the fact that the device is still motionless. On this slide, we present a comparison of magnetometer-based and gyroscope-based heading estimation on a simple polyline track with several loops. 
as one can see, errors of magnetometer are in general higher compared to gyroscope, and moreover, gyroscope results are more stable. But at the same time, on long straight line intervals, one can notice the drift of gyroscope based angle, while magnetometer still provides results close to the reference. To compensate the drawbacks and enhance the benefits of magnetometer-based and gyroscope-based heading estimation approaches, one can combine them in a so-called complementary filter. The idea of this filter is to use strong sides of each approach to compensate the errors of another. Gyroscope readings, stable on short time periods, are used to prohibit sudden orientation changes induced by magnetic errors. Meanwhile, stable long-term magnetometer trend is used to compensate the bias of gyroscope. However, even with the use of gyroscope and magnetometer, precise heading estimation won't be possible without accelerometer. The reason is that gyroscope and magnetometer data are essentially three-dimensional, while heading should be estimated in plane two-dimensional space. To obtain this orientation plane, we need accelerometer to estimate the direction of gravity force Z and then perform projection of magnetometer and gyroscope measurements on the plane XY perpendicular to Z. Finally, after obtaining heading from complementary filter and steps from pedometer algorithm, one can combine this data in a so-called pedestrian dead reckoning approach, PDR. Given the starting point, the idea of PDR is to reconstruct the trajectory of person motion advancing in space with intervals of length L corresponding to estimated step length in direction phi obtained from complementary filter. Results of PDR for different options of heading estimation are presented in figures. As one can see, fusion of magnetometer and gyroscope provides best correspondence to reference track. Additional discrepancies are introduced by errors in estimation of step length from pedometer, since, as one can see, the length of straight sections is longer compared to reference data. Well, that is all for complementary filter discussion. In our next lecture, we will discuss an advanced technique for indoor positioning called particle filter.